Good evening, everyone. My name is Alan Budman. I'm the first, I'm sorry, excuse me, the vice president, I forgot what my title was, uh, vice president of FJMC for training. Uh, it is my uh, honor to shortly introduce Alan Cahan, but first I want to tell you that FJMC is a wonderful organization. One of the things it allows you to do if you're a member and you come up with an idea, that idea could become a national program. I'm going to ask whoever's to make that noise to Mute. Let me mute all here. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, also, if you'd like to honor our presenter tonight, you can go on fjmc.org slash donate. I will put that on chat and you can give a donation to FJMC in honor of Alan. Alan is uh, the first vice president of FJMC. He will be the president of FJMC in mid-June, taking over from Tom Sudo, who's with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, Alan is uh, very experienced at giving this particular seminar because he gave it a form of it twice last year. It is still the most viewed seminar uh, that we have on our YouTube, YouTube channel, YouTube channel. Each session we do is recorded and placed on our YouTube channel for further viewing. Uh, please go to fjmc.org slash webinars to see the, the tapes that have already been made and also future events. This is the second in our Passover series. We have several more coming up. Again, go to our schedule to see them. Alan is also a inveterate Haroseth maker, and I'm sure he'll be speaking about that as well. So I will ask him to unmute. And at this time, I'm happy to introduce Alan Cahan. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The, uh, I'm going to share my screen initially. The um, understand that this is going to be, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in, in uh, well, this is what I call tractate two of, uh, the virtual Seder. The, it's going to be a little bit different uh, than the, the first two that I gave because the FJMC has had three uh, presentations about the Seder in terms of, you know, how you can create a uh, creative Seder. And what I'm, this will really do is, uh, is talk to you about some of the things that can go wrong We've all been, unfortunately, having to, to interact through Zoom, and sometimes those glitches, much like the uh, initial glitch that, uh, that Alan had with the background uh, noise, really gets in the way of a, a memorable uh, Seder. So let's start. What this webinar is, a guide to try to eliminate some of the issues which affect far too many virtual presentations. We are all probably knowledgeable about the cell phone. And years ago, we had we always had the, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Because the reality was that the technology didn't always work so that uh, uh, as we wished. If we can eliminate those, uh, those virtual center potential glitches and come up with more ways to make the un, upcoming Seder more like one which we've hosted in person, how much more special such Seder 2021 will be for all of us. The, uh, this is not going to be an introduction to doing a Zoom Seder. As I said, there are two presentations that you're welcome to, to uh, look at on uh, that it were recorded last year. And as, uh, as the, the blue text shows, that's on the uh, on the web page. When you go to that web page, you'll see the go to the YouTube playlist, and I believe it's towards the bottom of the playlist. Even though it's, it was one of the first that we did, creative. It is not about creative ideas for conducting your seder. The uh, there was a presentation done about a week ago, uh, creative seder ideas. Uh, entitled Spicing Up Your Seder, presented by Barry Kling of the New England region, that had many creative ideas beyond the one that I, the presentations I did last year. 
there are some of the, the sites where you can find those. Now, I don't wanna disappoint anybody. Many of the ideas in terms of what's an interesting Seder depends on how many guests and, and, how, and what the age of the guests are. The, um, normally we would have 35 to 45 people at our Seder. That's basically my wife's side of the family because most of them live in the, the, uh, the Washington area. This year, we'll probably have my, my, our two daughters. My son is down in uh, Florida, and hopefully my brother and wife and my uh, brother-in-law, my wife's oldest uh, brother. So it'll be uh, an eight-person Seder rather than 42. The, uh, but there is, I'll suggest to you one uh, link, www.hagadot.com, Hagada comedy Seder, that if you're looking for creative ideas, there are a number of uh, ways that you can incorporate comedy into your Seder. Okay, one of the questions will, what will, if your guests will be local or distant? Uh, this may affect uh, whether you can get people involved to share food preparation. Alan talked about the fact that uh, I'm the Harosit King. No, I'm not like the Halibut King, but about 20 years ago, even though I grew up in a very traditional Ashkenazi home with my traditional Ashkenazi Harosit, uh, I knew that there had to be more and more creative Harosit out there. The, uh, and so I started making not one, not two, not three, not four, but usually five different uh, uh, Sephardic haroset. If you're able to convince your guest to, to prepare food and then if, if they're local, uh, sharing it with that, you know, or sharing with particular recipes or particular foods that can make the family Seder, even though it's Zoom, much more special since everybody would be, be able to participate using or tasting the foods that they're used to. If your family are local, are they willing to make such spe family specialty portion of the traditional Seder meal? I found that um, unless it's relatively, unless the ingredients are relatively easy and it's relatively easy to come by, I found that uh, many family members might like coming to, to the Seder, but sometimes aren't willing to devote the sufficient time to both acquire the necessary ingredients and make same. But it's worth exploring. The, uh, uh, <coughs> so I'm going to this year be making haroset to those that won't be there, and I will be driving it uh, around. It's probably about three stops you know, close enough. And so they'll at least be able to have a little of the, the flavor of the traditional carrots or the traditional Seder that we would normally make. The, um, uh, one of the things that I've learned is as important as those foods might be to us, the, you, may, you might find that uh, for many of the people, they may not be worth the extra effort required of your guests. Um, and then the question is, if your guests are distant, sharing recipes with sufficiently time for participants to obtain ingredients and make those family traditional dishes may be your only option. The, uh, and I, I put on the bottom, unless all the ingredients are easily available at most grocery stores, such recipe may not be something that your guests are willing to inquire. The, now for the technical problem, because really this is what I, uh, I was thinking of, you know, I often the, say the part of the problem of satyrs or any presentation is like, like a personal help. If your toe is hurting you, the fact that 95% of your body feels great is not, is not wonderful. You're, you're much more aware of your toe hurting you than anything else. The, uh, one of the more important things to understand, but which none of us can control, is the robustness of the internet signal for each participant's household. And because that may vary significantly, the, as well as vary over the course of the evening, one of the things that you might want to do, or the host might want to do, is to by plugging in with an ethernet cord directly into the modem, 
Uh, but once again, that location may not be convenient. Our modem is in the family room. Our dining room is a good 20 feet away. So we need a 50 foot long cord. Add to this fact that a computer speed or how quickly it can process information and both an audio and video signal and whether it's seen and heard by the receiver the same way it was sent are things that we really have to be aware of. Rather, in a virtual seder, it's both audio and video, which is potentially being broadcast and received. The, um, if a person's audio and video signal is not being well received, it can be helpful to turn off a receiver's video signal so that the audio signal is the only one which is affecting system performance. I've had this at meetings, which I've been to, when there are only five or six people on there. And sometimes I will turn off the video because the audio is much more important for me to hear. As I said, better for your guests to be able to hear what is happening than your guests to be plagued by both audio and video issues which affect their enjoyment of the Seder. And unfortunately, that was not one of the plagues which uh, God sent forth against the Egyptians. Um, now you may want to set up a schedule of what parts of the Seder each guest will be leading and who will be talking when, so that for the most part, the, uh, it's just a, a small group and most of the people can be muted. Um, the, um, one of the things that most people don't realize is that if, if people are talking and listening at the same time, there's really twice as much data that is flowing through the system. And once again, if, you're, if, the, if your bandwidth is not strong, you've got problems. The, um, having said all that, it's strongly urged that to the extent that parts of the Seder can be recorded, they should be. The, um, obviously, you know, if you divvy up portions of the Seder, you can, each, you can ask each of your guests or guest families to take and record what they're going to do. I may, and we've seen that in many of the professional presentations that have been on TV. Earlier or late last year was the 90th birthday of Stephen Sondheim. As people who know me well, I'm a, a, a fanatic of the the composer lyricist. Even though it was professional, they had technical problems. But what they had was they had everybody that was going to be performing videotape themselves. And so then the host was the one that was broadcasting it rather than to have the problem of the, uh, the signal going from the host to the participant back to the host to be broadcast all the way. If one of the younger members of the family is going to be reading the four questions, have the reading videotaped. Since video files are often larger than many email programs allow to be sent, such files may be happy, happy to be copied to a cloud storage location. Google Drive, which is free, Dropbox, which I believe is a, a small amount of money beyond a, a minimum, or Apple Storage, which is a, can be a minimum. I think it's 50 gigabytes for, uh, uh, I, I want to say nine, uh, uh, $5 or something a, uh, a month. The, um, any portions of your Seder which can be videotaped prior to the Seder day, uploaded to the central collection location, then downloaded to the host computer, so that when the leader is playing such video, it only needs to have half the bandwidth going one way just to the participants will help. The, uh, as I said, there were professionals, you know, I've seen a number of concerts and if it needed to go from the, the, uh, the watcher's desk or one of the guest desks up to the host, but there is always the potential of problems. This shows what would be half the bandwidth i.e. if the host has got, uh, has got all those videos, when he plays it on his system, like I'm showing it to yours, the, um, it's only going out rather than coming in. The, uh, 
what we've learned, and I'm sure all of us have been on a, um, a presentation, religious services, in fact, where group singing or reading doesn't work particularly well. And part of the reason is each of the signals are different. So that lag in audio signals coming from multiple locations, it almost sounds like a cacophony of cats. The um, other issues and how to resolve them. As I'm going to guess, all of us have had the opportunity of being on a Zoom session when microphones are on, not muted, and they don't realize that side conversations or noise from their location becomes a major irritant to everybody else. The, um, the, and particularly if, the, if some of your guests are going to be older, they're, they're not going to do that. So one of the things that I suggest, teaching them at the beginning of the Seder how to mute and unmute. Had the Israeli slaves had more advanced warning, they might have prepared better for their departure from Egypt. Just think, dough that rose and the 2000 year tradition of matzah may not have existed. However, you explain that in pre preparation of our journey during this Zoom Seder, we'll want to refresh some skills which make the journey easier. And I, literally, the, uh, I, I, at Seders I've conducted, if I wanted to stress what we'd be doing during the night, I would have them locate their mute button, which looks like a mic microphone on the toolbar. And on the, the bottom, it shows, depending on whether it's a desktop or laptop computer or a, on a tablet, you know. And I've seen people, my brother's a little older than me. And when he has to mute, all of a sudden he's using the same device and he's looking around, where is it? You know, so that might be the start of your Seder, you know, only because if they can learn to mute, it might be a much more pleasant experience. Um, one of the issues that I have often found as a host is I'm juggling too many responsibilities. And the one thing that I would suggest is if you have a, a high school student or 20 something participating in your Seder, you might wanna make them the co-host and give them the responsibility to mute participants who, who aren't the focus of conversation or their talking or background noise. I assure you, <clears throat> I have three 30 year olds uh, in my family that my, <clears throat> my children would enjoy that role much more than frequently listening to a Seder story that they've told many times. The uh, making one of your co guests a co-host to help with the back end. Earlier, before you came on, obviously, Alan uh, Budman made me a co-host so that I could share my screen. Well, these are the, the, the directions how to do that, you know, during a meeting, how you would do that. The, um, and I talked about videotaping parts of the presentation. And this is one of the, the things that there are two ways that um, they can videotape. Most people when holding up their, since everybody's got a videotape, a, a videotape recorder now, you know, a camera, it's called your cell phone. What you can do is you can just suggest to them that they record their tape on a horizontal video because most people are used to those video. And if you were to, you know, and that might, that might be an easy way for them to record something. If they have a standard tripod, photographic tripod, that can be used to hold the camera so that they get a, a, a steadier shot. And since the microphone may not pick up sound well, unless the camera is relatively close to the subject, they might be want to, you might be want to give that guidance to your participants. If you're thinking of playing a video which is on the internet during your Seder, I've done that in years past, I strongly suggest downloading it a couple of days prior to your Seder to your computer so that the bandwidth issue, which we discussed before, doesn't interfere with playing of a video. Depending on the file, it may be easily downloadable or it may take some special software, which may be free. But if done before the Seder, your production will be much more polished. You know, what is it, uh, the uh, 
Uh, I've often played the Maccabees, which have had uh, Seder melodies, and I've downloaded it to the to my uh, computer, and I've had that so that I don't have to worry about how strong the signal is coming in. The uh, if you're thinking of using photos, particularly family photos from past Seders, which show members of the family which are no longer with us, get the photos. Make sure that when you display them. They are large enough for people to see and enjoy when you share your screen. And if you wish to crop them, which many programs were processing or will allow you to do, you can show more of your image of what you'd like to see. This particular picture is a picture of my father and his brother of blessed memory. Obviously that goes back a couple of years and the, a larger photo makes a much more interesting thing for a virtual Seder. The, uh, Cropped or uncropped, here's the same picture. One's uncropped, the, uh, the other is cropped. Uh, Pre-COVID, I did a, I took a class and it was a guy speaking about the, the role of blacks in DC, uh, the history of DC. And I, his, his, his presentation was excellent, but his photos weren't cropped. And so you weren't getting the full impact of what he wanted. And I actually offered to, to take his photos and crop them all and name them, the, which he was most appreciative of. He didn't take me up. But obviously, as you can see, the, the one captures the image that you want to make, give much more succinctly. And then once you've got all the parts of the Seder, which you're going to use for your Seder, you might want to do the following. Put them on a single folder, which is on your desktop. Change the names of the files so that you can quickly and easily identify them and order them which you'll, in, the which, in the order that you'll use them. Since many virtual programs will show your computer's desktop, you might want to clean your desktop so it doesn't have dozens of files which make it difficult for you to find the folder and the file you need to play and which detract from the present, your, your Seder. Um, and if you wanna have your first video file already loaded, ready to play, so that if it is a video or like this, it's a, 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 um, a PowerPoint or presentations thing, you don't have to, it doesn't have to take the time for the program to boot up. Um, the, I'd like your guests to think you're as professional as you can be. And the final advice, since you'll be conducting the Seder, it's the same advice which was given by the great uh, Yasha Heifman, a linist to the great group, Arthur Rubinstein, a pianist, or Leonard Bernstein, conductor, who someone asked him, how did he get, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And they said, practice, practice, practice. Even if you've assembled all the pieces, videos, pictures, and all, which you're going to be using to conduct your Seder, I recommend doing a full blown run through, even if it's with one person, which means finding and playing any videos, et cetera, to help your virtual Seder 2021 even more special. While there is no right or wrong way to do a virtual Seder, obviously the more you can get rid of the hiccups, the more your family and guests will appreciate and remember uh, what, what your Seder is about. I would hope that you'll make the, your Seder your own this year. The, uh, it's going to be, even though we did, many of us did it last year, we always have the ability to do it even better this year. If you'd like a copy of this presentation, I'll send you everything I have, including uh, a copy of this presentation and any other sites I have. The, um, um, uh, just send me an email and I'll send you everything I have. I thank you. And if there are any questions, I'm more than willing to answer them. You can you can unmute everybody unmute now. Any questions? You know, so, Alan. Last year, most of us who did this, the groups were small. People right. got together. You know, like. A couple, couple people in each family, so you saw that the screen. This year, I'm hearing about families getting, you know, larger groups getting together, and they still want to do Zoom. 
which and how are you going to handle that sort of with you know with the cameras and everything else so people can be seen and people can be heard and so it doesn't turn into you know a mess that's where i do as much if i divvy up the i divvy up the parts ask them if they can record it and so at least part of the seder there is structure you know the uh, because if you're if you try to get if you try to get it's it's herding cats if you try to get individuals um, to uh, uh, to do it online it is very difficult you know the um, you know many times as many times we've seen in in presentation in professional presentation people can't be seen at all you know the pre, the, the the speaker can be seen so i really think a better presentation a better seder experience if you control, because then you're then it's much easier to control the sound. Uh, so I I do it as more as much video or assigning parts as I could. Rick Allen, I think what um, what I got from Tom's question uh, maybe it's not, but it's something I was going to ask. Go ahead. We're actually literally having a larger group physically present as well as other people on Zoom. And so that's going to be a challenge because it's almost like we need a cameraman at our end to do it. And we just have a laptop there. Do you need somebody to shuffle it around or what? It, in fact, it was great. They came out with the guidelines today and it's my daughter coming up with her granddaughter, which was exactly the example that Rachel Walensky gave. We're getting our second shots tomorrow, so we'll be all ready for it. Right. So we're going to have where we had two people last year, we're going to have six people at the physical Seder that's kind of the center of it. And then lots of groups of two, three, four, all around. And I think that that gets a little unwieldy in terms of people staying in the picture, you know. Yeah, but what, like you, what, what you can do is get an external camera, right? Okay. Um, and, and then just move the camera around. Right, that's what I'm saying, you need a camera in yeah. one place. And if you can give one of the younger people who, who being part of the Seder is not as critical as being, <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, you know, <laughs> Quite honestly, they've heard the story. If if they were to miss, the, they want to be part of the part of the proceeding. But quite honestly, the proceeding doesn't it doesn't excite them as much as the older. So I would give them, you know, give them co-host. They can take their camera and they can use it as a uh, a video recorder. You know, the um, so that that you don't have that problem. So that they can focus on. Who's going to be, you know, the center of the the uh, the video, the picture? Good, thanks. Any other? Any other? If I pay you, can I? Can I get? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm venting. I'm venmoing each you, each of you, you know, uh, five shekels, and I expect yeah. no, the uh, so. Last year we ended the seders with next year in person. Right, and we didn't make it this and year. We didn't we'll, make it. This year we'll say it, and uh, I'm almost sure by next year we'll actually be there. We we hope. We yeah. hope. What is it? Uh, you know, I saw just uh, today a story about uh, the effectiveness of some of the uh, both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine with some of the new variants. So you know the. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Right. On the other hand, the other side of that is, like we're having. Most of our people are from uh, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, but we have a couple in Colorado, right, who are going to be there, and oh, they no, wouldn't no, have been no, physically no. present. So I can see in the future you'll have a group, the physical group, but then you'll have a few Zoom people right. from all over the world, possibly. Right, right. and so I, I would think that us. I would think that that's going to be something that we've seen that it can be done, yeah. and so it really means that people that normally wouldn't be a part of the, the family celebration or part of the family celebration. So that'll be nice. Right. Okay, well, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for participating, people, and uh, have a wonderful Passover. See you Look guys. for our other Passover. Probably see you before Passover, but. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy good health and safety to everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.